What's up, everybody? Do I back at it again with another video on Insurgency Sandstorm? Today, we're going to be talking about an update that got released about a day ago, State of Production 7 to be exact. And the main reason why is because there's actually some big news in this that was kind of just swept under the rug, which seems kind of convenient that nobody's really talking about it, considering how big a news it is. But before we really get into that, let's talk about some of the other updates by going through their key points. The first one here is COVID 19 statement and update from New World Interactive. New World Interactive was not exempt from the impact of COVID 19. As it stands now, no one has been infected with the virus, and the company has forced its employees to work from home until all is clear. This is a friendly reminder from Durag to be sure to wear your hazmats or face masks or whatever you have and wash your hands. The last thing I need is my viewers not viewing anymore. But yeah, let's move on to the next thing. This next one talks about a 1.6.2 patch overview. It says here that the patch contains a range of fixes for issues that was discovered in the previous patch, as well as a number of new modding features requested by the community but it's primarily there just to fix issues it was a patch that was scheduled for the free weekend and they tried not to interrupt players while it was going on the next one is free week in retrospective they say here that it was one of their most successful events to date welcoming over 160,000 new players to the game with 2.25 million game launches and the game peaked on sunday afternoon with close to 12,000 players online concurrently that's a pretty big achievement considering what I've seen. I mean, usually their their game has a range of like a thousand to three thousand players. Usually, from what I've seen, these analytics came from a guy named John Higgins, a communicative director, and they also talked about thanking the special Sandstorm partners who helped grow the viewership on Twitch by five hundred percent compared to the previous thirty days. Pretty interesting. All right, let's move on to the next one. The next one is fixing spawn issue on frontline and power plant exploit fixes. So over the last couple of months, it seems as if they had an issue with frontline spawning players underneath the map it seemed to have been a strange issue for them where they had thought that at some point it was fixed but apparently if a player dies right after the last objective has been captured and the player responds the player will respawn at the origin of the map once they found that out their programming team basically fixed the issue also apparently there have been level exploits that have been severe so that's interesting apparently there have been some exploits that have been a severe threat to the fun factor and balance of the level on power plant i mean i haven't played the game that long to actually know of these severe exploits but i'm glad that they actually fixed it before i decided to come back but apparently they found the critical exploits faster than they expected using an interesting method i'm not going to get too much into it so let's go ahead and move on here the next one is potential environment for the skmm timetable since the release of insurgency sandstorm there has been a lingering issue with the code base you don't say skmm is a process that merges multiple skeletal meshes different 3d assets into a single skeletal mesh using code they go on to talk about how it's very hard to actually replicate this issue to try and fix it but if they somehow fix it that would stop a lot of the uh, instability that's going along with uh you know the code so let's hope that they get that fixed because we're going to be moving on to the next one here it says uh, clipping fixes they basically fixed a whole lot of cosmetics clipping that was going through a lot of clothing also some clipping that was going on with the new weapons and some of the optics which is pretty cool it's pretty great that they're fixing that let's move on they were apparently doing a tutorial overhaul, which I remember playing the tutorial a long time ago, and it was really just like bare bones. Like you just walk in and you see like a bunch of guns on the table. But now it's like a full on like mission sort of thing where they tell you what to do and how to do it. Like there's an actual dude that's yelling at you. I think it's um who's the dude that was yelling at you in the first uh the 2014 insurgency? I think it was Alex or Mikey, I can't remember. I think that was his name. I think that's the guy who's talking to you, but I could be wrong. But I remember um it actually had some bugs where it wouldn't let you continue to a different part of the tutorial the sad thing is that it was actually going on during a promotion <laughs> Oof. But yeah, hopefully this tutorial is a lot better than, uh, you know, what I played last time. Because that seems pretty cool. It's going to be great for new players, I would say. The next one is refactoring the progression system for new players. Now, as I was reading this now, I just realized how much of a big change this is to the game. This is a very substantial change that kind of caught me off guard. It seems as if they are planning to set player level limits on classes in an effort to improve the first time player experience and address feedback on the commander and observer misuse. Rifle 
Rifleman will be the first class unlocked by default at level 0, followed shortly afterward by the Breacher at level 2, which in our current projection should take about 15 minutes of gameplay, classes will slowly start to take more time to unlock, and the classes unlocked will become more and more specialized as you go along, with the Observer and Commander coming at the end, which should take about roughly 9 to 12 hours of gameplay in the official matchmaking mode. So this is actually really interesting. You have to unlock every class now. I mean, it doesn't seem like it takes a long time to do that, but still, that's pretty interesting. That really changes the game a lot. Because before, you would just be able to just, you know, pick whatever class that you want, but now you have to unlock it. So it gives more incentive to the player, you know, to keep on playing. The goal with putting Observer and Commander at the very end of this track is to mitigate new players taking up these slots and not playing their roles properly, and to make sure they're only open to players who are at least mildly experienced. If you're at or above level 20, this change won't affect you. This feature will be able to be switched on and off on the community servers if you would prefer to have all the classes available regardless of the player level. Okay. Rifleman will be given infinite slots, like in hardcore co-op, in line with this change, and competitive classes will be unaffected. So that's interesting. They go on to talk a little bit more of why this is a significant change and hope to get a bunch of, uh, you know, feedback. And uh, yeah, that's, that's a gigantic change that I wasn't actually expecting from this, but good thing I read through it. I thought that it was an interesting idea, but one of my subscribers was telling me that it could also be an unfair advantage because if somebody has a higher, you know, level, then they have access to better stuff like a sniper or, you know, guys with just different abilities and gear. So, I mean, I guess we'll have to see. I think I like it simply because, you know, it kind of gives me incentive to keep on playing to try and un unlock everything. But yeah, I took his concern into consideration. So we'll have to see. But yeah, let's move on. Um, So this one, I'm not sure if I can justify it, but uh, I'm just going to read it. So this one is discussion about optimization plus new skins. Over the past 10 years, we've realized that our strategy of free updating and extended game support has been a pretty big differentiator for NWI. When we looked more closely at this approach, we realized that it has compromised our company's ability to stay independent as we consider bigger projects with larger budgets. Therefore, we have decided to make a minor pivot in our philosophy and introduce some cosmetic only microtransactions into Insurgency Sandstorm that will be oriented to improving customization. For those of you that want more personalized experience and unique look in Sandstorm, our in-game purchases will offer you an option to build your characters in special ways you couldn't otherwise do with regular cosmetics. You'll be able to customize your appearance in a way that will be more distinct and more enjoyable and also in time be able to apply custom made weapon skin. Why are we doing this? The bottom line is we want to be able to achieve two outcomes. The first is extending the life of our game and being able to financially manage ongoing support of the game for all of you. The second reason being that it is critical for us to explore how to best incorporate recurrent revenue as a means of removing stress from the development team as well as to ensure and recreate the types of content we currently aren't able to provide with our team size. So I don't know how to feel about this. Like I, I definitely think that this is going to help Insurgency Sandstorm. You know, it's definitely something that's going to keep the money flowing, but I don't know if I can justify this decision because for one, this is a game that hasn't been receiving a whole lot of updates until recently. Like I already paid, you know, money for this game. I was expecting this to be 10 times better than Insurgency 2014, but it just objectively is not. Like maybe if it had actually started out with microtransactions and it was actually a fully revamped version of the 2014 version and the game was actually optimized and was it as glitchy as it was on launch and they were adding game modes onto it and you know maybe i could justify it but i'm just like i don't know it really doesn't feel right i'm not sure that i like this but i mean it's their game and it's their call and if they feel that they need to do this then uh, so be it. So that was microtransactions. The last thing that's here is that they're going to be adding in night maps and it seems as if they're actually going to change from day to night as you're playing in the map. That or it's just transitioning but I, I'm not entirely sure. But it looks like they're showing off two versions of night vision goggles which is kind of cool. Again this is a feature that I feel should have been in the game like at day one because you know they actually did add in a night map. I mean this is actually what I'm showing on the screen right now is that time when they actually added in a night map 
for a uh, event. It was back in October last year. I think I think that's when they added in Frenzy at 1.2. And yeah, they just took it out. Like, what the hell? I actually really like the night map. I don't know why they did that. But yeah, like I said, I don't know how that justifies the microtransactions because I feel like a lot of the stuff that they're, you know, talking about here should have been in the game in day one. But, uh, you know, I guess this is how it's going to be. So what are your thoughts on this update? I honestly think that it's not great uh, but maybe you guys have a different opinion let me know what you think down below if you enjoy the fact that i cover games like these and more be sure to like share comment if you're someone that's new be sure to subscribe and ding the bell stick around you never know you might find something that you like if you're someone that would like to support the channel be sure to check out my patreon just send two bucks a month that's all i really need and with that all being said i want to thank everybody for coming out to watch and i guess i'll catch you in the next one Bye bye